Welcome. I'm Chelsea Redman, Senior Associate at Fieldman Rollup and Associates. Fieldman is a municipal advisor that has been serving public entities for over 55 years. In this public finance fundamentals presentation, I'll be discussing the basics of municipal bond refundings. So what is a refunding? A refunding is the process whereby a bond issuer refinances outstanding bonds by issuing new bonds. The prior bonds are called the refunded bonds and the new bonds are called the refunding bonds. The proceeds of the refunding bonds are deposited into an escrow account that pays the debt service on the refunded bonds when that becomes due. These funds in the escrow account can be invested so that earnings minimize the costs of the escrow. The most common investments are state and local government securities, endearingly called slugs, or open market securities, such as T-bills. Why would an issuer want to do a refunding? The most common reason is to achieve debt service savings. For example, say an issuer sold bonds 10 years ago at a 5% interest rate, but now the interest rates in the market are lower the issuer might have the option to refund those 5% bonds and reissue at 4% and pay less in debt service payments. This is similar to how homeowners can refinance their mortgage for savings. The next most common reason is to remove a burdensome covenant, such as restrictions on the issuer's ability to sell additional bonds. Other reasons could be to restructure debt service payments or consolidate multiple issues of bonds into one more easily trackable series. An issuer could even combine a new money issuance with the refunding to save costs. Keep in mind, not all bonds can be refunded. There must be a provision made at the time of issuance that allows the issuer to recall the bonds prior to the final maturity date. This is called an optional redemption or call feature. A usual call date is 10 years from the date of the bond's issuance. Here's an example of language that would appear in the offering document, the official statement. This states that these bonds cannot be redeemed before July 1st, 2029, but those that mature on and after July 1st, 2030 could be called. These on any date after the 2030 call date. Some bonds can only be redeemed on any interest payment date. When an issuer redeems its bonds, it pays the investors a call price or face value plus accrued interest and at that point stops making interest payments. When this is all it's paid, it's called a par call. However, sometimes the bondholders need to be compensated for their bonds that are being called away from them earlier and thus the issuer pays a premium call price. The amount of premium can decline incrementally after the initial call date, uh, for example, shown here. If these bonds are called between September 2027 and March 2028, the issuer would have to pay the face value of the bonds outstanding, plus the accrued interest, plus an additional 3% of par in premium. Often at least 30 days before the redemption, the trustee will also need to notify the current bondholders that their bonds will be called. Depending on the type of refunding, which I will go into further detail in a minute, the debt issued may be restricted to be either tax exempt or taxable. For bondholders, interest on a tax exempt bond is excluded from gross income for federal income tax purposes. Because of this, investors agree to lower interest rates. On the other hand, interest on taxable bonds is not excluded from federal income tax and will often have higher interest rates as compared to tax exempt debt. So why is this important? There are two common types of refunding, current and advanced. A current refunding is when the outstanding bonds are redeemed within 90 days of when the new refunding bonds are issued. These can either be done on a tax exempt or taxable basis. An advanced refunding is when the outstanding bonds are redeemed more than 90 days. Prior to 2017, an issuer could do one advanced refunding on a tax exempt basis. 
However, under the Tax Cuts and Job Act of 2017, advance refundings can only be done on a taxable basis with some exceptions. For example, taxable Build America bonds could be refunded on a tax exempt basis, yet the issuer will lose their federal subsidy payments. Let's take a look at an example. Say the outstanding bonds are callable beginning July 1st. If the new refunding bonds are issued before April 2nd, this is an advanced refunding. If they're issued after April 2nd, this is a current refunding. As of the date of this presentation in June of 2021, there are currently two bills before Congress that would restore tax exemption for advanced refundings. One is the Lifting Our Communities Through Advanced Liquidity for Infrastructure Act, introduced to the Senate in February, and the other is Investing in Our Communities Act, introduced to the House in March. Both are currently in committee, but we are closely monitoring their progress. Now that we have determined the what and the why about refundings, the question is now, should an issuer pursue a refunding? As mentioned before, one of the main reasons to do a refunding is to achieve debt service savings, meaning your new debt service payments under the refunding bonds are less than the existing debt service payments. This concept is demonstrated in the table and graph that show a sample refunding debt service payment schedule, which shows there's about $150,000 of savings each year and over $1.8 million in total savings. Although the annual and total savings are good indicators, the net present value, which takes the future payments and discounts them to the present, is a better indicator. Most cities actually have a provision that they won't pursue a refunding unless the ratio of NPV savings to bonds refunded is greater than 3%. You can see in this example, the refunding results in almost 22% savings. So this is a good candidate for refunding. A couple of final thoughts for issuers. Now that you know the importance of a call feature, if you are an issuer, consider the trade-offs of issuing any long-term bonds without it. Another useful thing to note is that refundings can be used as a tool not only to refund bonds. As each bond issuance has a cost, Consider combining a refunding with a new money issuance to enhance savings, reduce time, and total cost of issuance. In all cases, issuers should evaluate the pros and cons of refunding bonds now versus waiting. Not only should you evaluate the current market interest rates compared to historical trends and that impact on savings, but consider the number of years and par amount left in the outstanding bonds to see if it's worthwhile to pursue refundings. But remember, overall, refundings are an opportunity that could have a large benefit and should be closely monitored. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, please like and subscribe to our channel. If you need any further information, our team of municipal advisors shown here would be more than happy to help. Thank you again.